Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. Today we're going to talk about scientific notation. And just like the name implies, scientific notation is used by scientists. Scientists have to deal with some things that are really, really large, like the sun, and some other things that are really, really small, like an atom. And our regular numbering system would be really, really cumbersome to use. Let's look at an example. This gorgeous picture of the sun doesn't really sh tell you how big it is, but it's huge. I wonder what the mass of the sun is. Oh my goodness, that's a really big number. If I had to write that number all day long, or if I had to do calculations with that number, it'd just take forever. Well, fortunately, scientific notation will allow us to reduce that number to that. 1.989 times 10 to the 30th. And that would be a lot easier to write and a lot easier to work with. Now there's a couple of things about scientific notation you need to remember. There's two portions to the, the scientific number. We call that the factor. And the factor is going to be a number between 1 and 10. The factor is going to be greater than 1, but less than 10. You couldn't have a factor of 23. It has to be between 1 and 10. And then you multiply the factor by some power of 10. In this case, 10 to the 30th. Now, if we were to really carry out that multiplication, 1.989 times 10 to the 30th power, we'd come up with that number. Well now how did we come up with 1.989 times 10 to the 30th? Well I guess I'll show you how. If we start with our original huge number, I don't have a decimal point there but there's a decimal point after that last zero. And what I want to do is move that decimal point all the way up here so it's right after the 1. I want to move it all the way from the right to the left. And how many times am I moving it? Well, I'm moving it once, twice, three times, four times, five times, six times. Actually, I moved it 30 times. I moved it 30 times. And I ended up with 1.989 times 10 30 times. Well, let's look at a simpler example and see if that helps you understand. This is a big number, but it's not nearly as big as the mass of the sun, 42 million. And I want to convert that to scientific notation. So what I want to do is move my decimal place once, twice, three times, four times, five times, six times, seven times, and that's going to leave me 4.2 times 10 to the seventh. Now we talked about moving from standard notation to scientific notation. What if you had to go the other direction? What if they gave you this number, 4.2 times 10 to the seventh, and asked you to convert it to standard form? Here's how you do it. You'd start with your 4.2, and then you want to add a whole bunch of zeros after it. Now what you want to do is move your decimal seven places to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that leaves me a four and a two and six zeros. A four and a two and one, two, three, four, five, six zeros, or 42 million. Scientists also deal with some really small things, like an atom. 
Some atoms have masses as small as 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27th kilograms. Now, if I wanted to convert that number to standard notation, I'd take this decimal point and I'd move it to the left 27 times. I move it to the left because I've got a negative number there and I want to make it smaller. So I'm going to move it 27 times to the left and it'd look like that. Let's look at a simpler number and see if we can make more sense out of it. What if I had 1.32 times 10 to the minus 6th and I wanted to convert that to standard notation? Well, I, what I'd want to do is get my decimal point and move it six places to the left. One, two, three, four, five, six. And it'd look like that. See, I move my decimal from there one, two, three, four, five, six places because it was 10 to the minus sixth. One last thing to discuss. What if we want to multiply two numbers that are in scientific notation? For instance, 2 times 10 to the third times 3 times 10 to the second. Well, I'd want to regroup those. I'd want to change that to 2 times 3, 2 times 3 times 10 to the third times 10 to the second. Now I'm going to multiply my 2 times 3, and I'm going to get 6. And then I'm going to multiply my 10 to the 3rd times 10 to the 2nd, and that equals 10 to the 3 plus 2 power. Now if I add my 3 plus 2 power, I'm going to get 5. So it, it really uh, shortens down to 6 times 10 to the 5th. You try this one. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit your forward key to move on to the answer. All right, I want to write this big number in scientific notation. And that means I need to get my decimal point right there, right after the 1. So it reads 1.362 times 10 to some power. What power is that? Well, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 places I want to move it. So the answer would be 1.362 times 10 to the ninth. Well, this time I'm going in the other direction, from scientific notation to standard form. And I want to move my decimal six places to the left. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'll come up with one, two, three, four, five, six, point zero, 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 three, four, five. Well, if I want to multiply two terms that are listed in scientific notation, the first thing I want to do is regroup them. I want to put my like terms together, my 3 and my 5, and my 10 and my third, 10 to the 3rd, and my 10 to the 5th. So I'm going to regroup it, and it's going to read 5 times 3 times 10 to the 3rd times 10 to the 5th. Now, I need to multiply my like terms together. 5 times 3 is 15, and 10 to the 3rd times 10 to the 5th is 10 to the 8th. But wait! 
Is that scientific notation? Doesn't my factor have to be a number between 1 and 10? And 15 is bigger than that. So, I need to change it one more time. I need to move the decimal one place to the left, which will increase my power by 1 and it'll read 1.5 times 10 to the ninth. Well that's our lesson on scientific notation. Now it's time to test your skills. Go to www.mastermath.info and download the worksheet on scientific notation. After you practiced at that worksheet, go on back to Master Math and take the quiz on scientific notation. Well, I hope you learned a bunch, and I hope we see you again real soon.